by question. What if I just wanted to see technology ones? We talked about that. I could go in and again, that's changing the data that I'm going to see. So it's going to be part of the SQL data source. And I can say where category ID equals 1. And now when I run it, I'll only see the 1. I don't see the question about how many games the Browns are going to win. Now, we can change the way this looks, right, as you might imagine. And we could change the way this looks a bunch of different ways, again, which is, depending on your perspective, a good thing or a bad thing. All right? I can, for example, apply to this grid view a auto format to give it a certain look. It's autumn, so we use the autumn view for it. I can actually edit the columns. Maybe I don't need to see the poll ID or the category ID. Maybe I want the header of the question to be something like poll question. I just put something in different than the column name because by default it gives you the column name. Alright? I'm curious to see as to whether this is actually changing your SQL statement or is it doing it some other way? Well, we can answer that question without looking. What do you think? Is it changing the SQL statement or not? No, because I'm not editing the SQL data source, I'm entering the grid view. So I'm changing, again, the two things, the two components. You got your data, you got the way I'm going to present the data to the world. Each of those is their components and they're bound, they, they talk to each other. So changing the way that it's going to look is going to be done on the grid view side. So here, I'm still pulling, in other words, I'm still pulling the category ID, I'm still pulling that, I'm just not showing it in the grid. Order by information is changing the data, not the way it looks. Yeah. Although, truth be told, I could also sort it via the data grid or the grid view too. So I actually have options on how to do that. All right. So now we go and run this, and we see what we had before, except it's spruced up a little bit, and it only shows um, that. Now I could also style this via CSS, right? Well, how do I style it via CSS? Well, I know that by is a table, right? I can go and look at view the source. So I know that this is a table. All right. Cell spacing, cell padding. Um, 1998 called. They want their HTML coding back. <laughs> uh, but I could go in and I could put the style and style the table a certain way, style the TRs a certain way, and, and so on, and not use those embedded styles. Again, you have to know what HTML it generates. Okay, but if you remember, this isn't what we wanted. This is close to what we wanted, but this isn't what we wanted. How is this not what we wanted for this page? If you remember back the original specs. Right, we want to drop down because we don't always only want to show tech questions. We want the user to be able to pick which one that they pick. So we need two pieces to make this work. All right. Number one, we need a drop down. All right. Number two, we need to change our SQL statement not to be hard coded to always pick techno technology. All right. Let's go and let's see. We got a little more than five minutes left. Let's see how far we get on this. All right. So, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to add the drop down here. All right? If we think this through, all right, we're, 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 we're back to where we were. It's, it's a very analogous situation to what we have up here now. There's going to be two components. 
there's going to be the database component and there's going to be the visual component. The database component is going to be the drop down. Or, I'm sorry, the, the visual component is going to be the drop down. The database is going to be to retrieve the list of categories. Why are we retrieving a list of the categories from the database? Couldn't I just go in and code those into the drop down like we did with residency types in that example? Just like to feed the whole purpose of yeah, it would. It, we could do it, but what happens if we add another category? We'd have to manually go back in and, and, and change that. So, I'm going to go and I'm going to create the drop down. All right. Notice how it says unbound. It's unbound because we have not assigned a data source to it yet. Now again, if we were doing this a week or so ago, we would have clicked Add Items and added all those categories. Again, we know that's not a good idea though, right? We know that's not a good idea because if someone were to add a new category, we'd have to manually go in and change this. Too much work. All right, we want to pull this instead from the database. Then we don't have to change anything if they add a new category. So the drop downs are visual part of it. Our data source, again, is going to be a SQL data source. Or do I need another data source? Can I use this data source? Okay. No. We need a new data source. <laughs> Why do we need a new data source? Remember, we can use part of what we did before, but we can't use the whole thing. Right? We're going to have the same connection, right? Because we're connecting to the same database. But we want different data out of the database. In the first data source, we wanted a list of polls. Now we want a list of categories. That's different data out of the database. So remember, a data source is a combination of the connection that you're connecting it to and the specific data you're going to pull. So in this case, no, we actually want a new data source. It's going to point to the same database. So if that's what you were thinking, you're right on those lines. But we're pulling different data from the database. So as such, we need a different data source. So I'll go in. SQL data source, configure it. I'm going to use the same connection, connection string. Next. What do I want to see? Well, where do I get the list of the categories from? Category table. The category table. Excellent. All right. So I'm going to put select. Category ID, comma, category name from category. And I could have done select star, but I just showed that in addition to saying select star, we can enumerate the specific columns that we want. I'm going to do next. I'm going to hit test query. And sure enough, there they are. It's going to be nice if these were in sequence, right? So I'm going to go and I'm going to back up and I'm going to say order by category name. Ah, that's a much neater list. All right. So I'm going to finish. And now I can choose the data source for this. I can bind the drop-down to that second SQL data source. So what data source do I want? I want the data to come from SQL data source 2. Now it's going to ask me two questions. And this gets back to what this generates HTML-wise. What is this generating HTML-wise? It's generating a drop-down. What's a drop-down? It's a select tag that has a list of options underneath of it. And what do options in a drop-down have in HTML? They have a value that the user sees, 
and a value sort of behind the scenes that the script is going to use. Well, what do we want the user to see? Do we want the user to see the category ID? No, that's meaningless to a user. It's meaningless to me, and I created it, right? I still couldn't tell you what category three is off the top of my head. So I want the user to display, I want to be displayed to the user, the category name. However, what do I need behind the scenes? In other words, what do I need to put into that query, all right, to pull out queries of that category? Do I need the name? No, I need the ID. So I'm going to make this have selected data field for the value of the drop-down list. So the value is going to be the ID. So I'll click OK. Now notice it says data bound, which means that there's a database behind it. There's a database query behind it. Let's run this. If we look at it, we will see our drop-down contains a list of categories, but this guy's still only showing technology because we haven't done anything to make it show the one that we've selected. If we look at the HTML for this, we see, again, the drop-down list is a select. We're displaying to the user the name because that's descriptive to them. But our value behind the scenes is the ID. And that's what we're going to need to put in to, well, not an if statement, but in the select clause to say, hey, I don't want, I don't just want all the time those polls for category one. I want to pull the value uh, from this drop down and use that to pick out the category of, that I want to see. So, how are we going to do that? I'm going to go a little over time today. Be sure to put in your evaluation that I give more than your money's worth. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go here. I'm going to edit SQL Data Source 1. And right now it's hard coded as number one, right? So no matter what I pick in that drop down, it's going to always show the technology uh, things. I want instead to pull the value from the drop-down. Another way to say that is this is what, and if you did this in Access, there's something very similar in Access, called a parameterized query. In other words, we're not pulling the exact same data every time. Sometimes we're pulling when category ID equals one. Sometimes we're pulling when category ID equals five. We are going to supply at runtime the category ID that we're interested in. So I'm not going to put a one there because I don't always want one. I'm not going to put a two there because I don't always want to put two. I need to represent that, hey, this is something that's going to get filled in later. I do that via a question mark, cleverly enough, an unknown, where category ID equals something. All right, and we're going to fill that something in in a second here. All right, so I'll click next. Now I have to say where that something's going to get its value from. All right, so where's that question going to get its value from? Well, it's going to get it from one of the controls on the page. Right, where is it going to get the value from? Drop down. From the drop down. So. A drop-down is a control, so it's going to get the value from one of the controls. Which control is it going to get? Does it want? We want the drop-down. Alright, so we can't really see here, but what it's doing is it's going to populate that question mark with the value of drop-down list one selected value. Alright, I click next. I can test the query. There's a parameter, so I have to put in a value. It shows me, yeah, if I put in one, I get that. If I put in, what was sports, four? Yeah, wasn't that. Two. Two, okay. Two, I get how many games the Browns going to win. 
the other categories I don't have any questions for, so it will show blank. If I put in a 5 here, for example, it doesn't show anything. One last thing I have to do is I have to make this an auto post back because I don't have a button. I could use a button, but I'm going to use enable auto post back. And that is, as soon as I change it, I'm going to get the value. So I run this now. And first category it shows is the first one on the list, art, which unfortunately doesn't have any questions. So we see a blank grid. If we go and pick sports then, we get that poll question. If we pick that uh, technology, we get that question. All right. I went over a lot today, especially the last half hour or 40 minutes or so. All right. What I'd like you to do, and remember, for your assignment that I think is due Thursday, all you have to do is display a list of cars. You don't have to display um, a bunch of stuff. For, you, know, you just have to display cars. You don't have to filter it or anything like that. But play around with this to see how you can write queries to pull from that database. Or take this and write some simple queries on your own to try to practice this and perfect it. You know. Um, I was talking to another student this morning, and I don't expect these lectures to, once you hear the lecture, magically you know how to do everything, right? But when you get in there and you start working on it, my hope is, is that as you see things on the screen, the concepts from the lecture will come back alive, and, and you'll be able to, to get through this. So that's what I have for today. We'll see you over in lab. Uh, last few steps that you were doing with the uh, select by parameter source and whatnot, that was. Uh